The first thing I wanna say, mudskippers are hard to find. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well, Zenzo with Tozawa Tanks. And I thought we would do kind of an update video slash vlog thing. Um, basically, I was down here yesterday doing some maintenance on some aquariums, doing a bunch of water changes, doing water changes for all my brackish tanks. And I thought, you know, it's been a long time since I've talked about brackish tanks in general, but more specifically, my mud skippers. I've got African mud skippers in this paludarium. I have Indian mud skippers in that paludarium. We even got my dog, Captain, down here hanging out in the fish room. Hey, Captain, say hey. Captain loves coming down here, mainly because I'm a little bit sloppy with pellet food sometimes, so he'll sniff around and find a dropped pellet here or there, so he loves to eat fish food. There's probably not a week that goes by when somebody doesn't reach out to me in some platform and ask me, mm -hmm. where can I get muskippers? And I say, I don't know. Like sometimes you can find them in stores, sometimes they can order them from you, sometimes you might find an online seller, and a lot of times they're just really hard to find. It really depends because they're not bred in captivity, they're all caught in the wild, they're all international, so you know, with stuff going on with trade and cost of freight and everything like that, they might be more difficult to find. But if you do find some, then they are great pets. They are fish, they are in the Gobi family, and they are a lot of fun. So here we have my African paludarium, half aquarium, half land. It's like a terrarium, but for fish, right? So you've got a land area, you've got a water area. Mudskippers are fish, but they do need to have space to get out of the water. They spend the majority of their time living out of the water. They actually can take in oxygen through their skin, uh, as well as uh, through gills. So they have the ability to do either one. So basically they like to get wet and then they'll kind of do that thing. Then they'll turn around to look in the water. And a lot, a lot of times what they'll do is they will just jump in the water, catch a fish, something to eat, and then swim out. So I do have lids on these. It's very important to have a lid in a mudskipper tank because they are jumpers. I actually am care very careful when I put my hands in this African mudskipper tank now because I've been bitten. And while it's not like they don't draw blood, ooh, it hurts. Like if you've, it's like have a sharp needle stuck in you. If you look at them closely, you can actually see their teeth. But one thing with the paludarium is a lot of times you get this fogginess. So the trick that I'll do is I'll just take like a little cup of water and I just pour it along the glass and it kind of clears up the haze. So that's if you want to view them and like, you know, take pictures or video, it makes it a lot easier. There are eight or nine African mudskippers in this paludarium. I had less before and then I got a bunch and was gonna give them to the zoo and that whole thing fell apart. And so I put them in here. What I found is I've actually had less aggression because I've been kind of overstocking them like I do with African cichlids. So when I was cleaning the tank yesterday, I had to like scare them away from my hand. Otherwise they think it's food. I had to scare them away so they wouldn't like bite me thinking I'm feeding them so I could like do some cleaning in there. They'll pretty much eat anything. Obviously anything alive that they can fit in their mouth. So small fish, don't mix them. They will grab them and eat them. And as I shared, they've got big teeth. Um, I like to do like a freeze dried food. So here's some freeze dried uh, krill that I got from a store near me. So here we go. See, they're already crowding. And it's like a little feeding frenzy. They have a mouthful of krill, and then as soon as they chew it up and eat it, they're gonna come back and get the others. If I throw some more in there, let's see if we can, oh, we just saw one grab one right there on the, against that little island. So yep, there's another one, just grabbed it. So they'll just do that. I'll just, they'll just put some floating foods in there. They'll see it, they'll grab it, they'll eat it, they'll take it away, they'll eat it, then they'll come back for more. They'll eat uh, flake food, so I give them um, krill flake quite often. Uh, they go nuts for this stuff. So I have some krill flake right here and I'm gonna put it on this rock. And they'll also eat like frozen foods, they eat pellet food, so they'll pretty much eat anything. And that's because I train them to eat prepared foods from the very beginning. If you give them only live foods when you first get them, it's hard to kind of wean them off of live foods like any fish. So if you are gonna keep them, as soon as you get them, try to get them introduced with some kind of dry food because it's gonna make things easier for you long-term. If you see them in a pet store, they might only be about three or so inches, but if they are the African variants, which usually have like the blue fin, they can grow quite large. If you have a smaller aquarium, you don't wanna have Africans. You are gonna wanna have the Indian variants, which I will show you next. 
Now we are over at the Indian Paludarium. It's also a brackish tank, but here we have the Indian Mudskippers and they are much smaller. They're like one quarter of the size or about the thickness of like a pencil. In here, I've got some nearite snails. I have a mono shrimp. I have bumblebee gobies and they all seem to live harmoniously in this paludarium. Now, as far as feeding them, they'll eat freeze dried foods, frozen food, nano pellets, flake food. So they will get, let's do krill flake. Cause you know, everybody loves krill flake. I would say if someone is looking to get into mudskippers, I would say start with the Indian mudskippers. They're usually more readily available for one, and they're a lot easier to care for. You don't need a large aquarium. You could probably have them just fine in like a 20 long, and maybe have like two or three of them in a 20 long and have like a, a land area or a beach area and water. They're kind of messy eaters. They'll grab some, they'll eat it, and then food falls in the tank, and then the bumblebee gobies and the shrimp will get it. So I can see the bumblebee gobies kind of swimming around looking for food now. Probably one of my favorite aquariums and one of my favorite fish that I keep are these Indian mudskippers. So lastly, because I want to talk about brackish water in plants, this is another brackish aquarium. Um, it's a little actually saltier than some of the other ones that I keep. And in here I have one of my green spotted puffers. I have one of my smaller green spotted puffers in this tank. And this tank is full of Java ferns. Here we have it fully submerged and it's been, I don't want to say it's like thriving, like it's not doing amazing, but it's making new Java fern. Maybe not as fast as it would be in a freshwater tank, but it's still doing okay. I've gotten new growth and it's been, I want to say like a couple of years or at least, yeah, probably a couple of years now where we've had Java fern in this salty environment. There's a little bit of, you know, dead leaves, but we have that all the time in other tanks. And we've got some more growth down here, some newer growth. So overall, the Java fern's doing well. You can see it's vibrant. Um, I probably would, it would be better off if I were to put some fertilizer in there, but I'm a little bit lazy on that sometimes. And again, it's been a couple of years at least that this has been a salty-ish tank and uh, the Java fern is living. So um, yeah, overall happy with it. People have suggested other types of uh, plants and brackish water before. So far, I haven't had a huge amount of success with those, but so far Java fern has been doing all right. If you have questions about brackish tanks, please comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. I do have a few. I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I think I have five brackish tanks set up right around there. That sounds about right. Maybe I missed one, but um, anyway. So yeah, if you have questions about brackish tanks and, and you know how to set it up or different questions, um, I do have several videos that I've made. I have a playlist, which I'll link that playlist down below and maybe at the end of this video. Um, but yeah, mudskippers, they're great. They're a lot of fun. A lot of you have asked for updates. If you can find them, they're worth keeping. And brackish water is easier than you think. So anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment, share, all that good stuff. And yep, check out the playlist on brackish. What's up, buddy? Hey, Captain. Say hi to the camera over here. Say hi to the camera right here. Zoom in. What's up, buddy? <laughs>